Summarizing what we've learned about heat transfer, we've got conduction, convection, and radiation. What we can really notice here is that as our heat source heats up whatever thing it's heating up, the energy tends to move from a place of high energy to a place of low energy. In the same way, we've got high energy down here, lower energy up here. I've got a heat source. We've got a heat source underneath a pot of water. As it heats up the water, the water is going to move to an area where it is colder. The energy is going to move through a solid. If I've got a, a, a metal knife, just like we looked at with the candle, it's going to move from the place where the heat is to the place where the heat is not. What if I had two fires? If I had a fire that was really hot over here and a fire that was kind of hot over here, well, the heat is going to flow from the really hot fire to the lower fire. So in all of these, and here I've got high energy, flowing to low everywhere around it. In all of these, low, w, in all of these, my energy moves from a higher energy point to a lower energy point, regardless of whether I think as a human being this feels hot or this feels hot. It's going to be the hottest moving to the less hot. It's going to be the highest energy moving to the lowest energy. And to think about why that is, Think about it this way. I've got, I've got a couple mason jars here, just duct taped together. This one has some water in it. If I take this water, if I take this and I just tip it on its side, let's get my computer out of the way so I don't pour water on my computer by accident. If I take this and I tip it, which way is the water going to flow? So if I tip it suddenly, the water suddenly moves this way. So. When I tip that jar sideways, let's just draw it like this, let's make it like that. Let's... When I first tip it over, then I'm going to have water, and it's, the water is going to look kind of like this. This is my water level right here. After a moment, just a moment, it only takes a moment, that water starts to flow this way. It flows from a place where there's more water to the place where there is less water. And it's going to keep flowing until those places are evened out. So when does the water stop flowing in this situation? It stops flowing and the water level is even on both sides. Why does it stop moving there? Well, because there's nothing to for either one to keep moving back and forth. There's no space for that water to go. So this water is going to move, it's going to keep moving until our new water level is even all the way across. Let's redraw that. So it flows until until that water level is even all the way across. Energy is going to flow the same way. It's really useful to think about the movement of energy to be like the movement of water or the movement of air as it moves through a system. So what we're going to do next is we're going to look at why. Why does it move from a place of high energy to low energy? And what does that have to do with things that aren't related to temperature at all? How does that impact systems and how the energy is arranged. So we're going to first look at why does this happen, and then we're going to think about how does that happen. We're going to think about why and how this happens to try and see if we can walk our way back to some guiding law of physics that will direct us to also explain why some reactions could get colder. Why we could have this reaction where we mix two chemicals and they get colder instead of warmer. Because just right now, we can't say energy always flows from a place of high energy to a place of low energy. Because we saw in that chemical reaction between ammonium chloride and barium hydroxide, the higher energy spot 
was the starting point. And energy didn't flow away from it, energy flowed into it. We ended up getting more energy than we started with. That doesn't make sense with this heat transfer model. So we need to go back a couple steps to try and figure out why is it that heat tends to transfer from a place of high energy to low energy? Why is it more common for that to happen? And then that explanation might be able to help us explain why sometimes reactions are endothermic. Instead of releasing heat, they absorb it. Okay? So, you should have gotten conduction, convection, and radiation. All of that should be done. It should be figured out. And we're going to be moving on tomorrow to thinking about how order and chaos has to do with this same idea.